Now let us look at a very special kind of a game called the matrix games. Um, so this is also known as the two person zero sum games and which is spelling out the whole uh, paradigm clearly there are only two players and their utility is sum to zero. So that is what a matrix game is. Why are we studying this kind of games? There are certain very interesting results, uh, some interesting properties that involves the stability notion that is the pure strategy Nash equilibrium notion that we have discussed and also the security notion that is the max mean strategies so we'll see that uh, there is a nice interplay between this max mean strategies and pure strategy Nash equilibrium uh, in this kind of games so let us uh, look into these games so as we know the games are generally represented by this tuple of three in, uh, entries uh, tuple of uh, three things uh, first is the play, player set in this case the player set is only two players uh, one and two strategy sets and this can be arbitrary even for a matrix game and utilities but utilities have a very specific structure that the uh, if you look at the utilities uh, and add them element wise uh, uh, the strategy profile wise then they will identically be equal to zero so what are the examples uh, that we explain uh, this notation a little better so i have just changed the uh, the previous penalty shootout game by removing one of the uh, strategies for both these players so here the first player is the shooter and the second player is the goalkeeper now they have only two strategies either shoot on the left and shoot on the right or uh, and for the goalkeeper dive on the left or dive on the right and the utilities remain the same and what you can observe here is that the sum so the for every strategy profile l comma l l comma r uh, for every strategy profile if you take the utility sum of these two players they will always be equal to zero similarly there can be an arbitrary game where both these players have three strategies each and you can see that every entry uh, in this uh, in this matrix has these two components which if you add it gives gives uh, rise to zero and because of this special structure you can represent this game in the form of one matrix so you can just uh, ignore the second part i mean the in every entry there are two and uh, uh, two elements but you already know that the second element will be the negative of the first element so you can just represent the whole game just by using one single matrix and uh, let us represent that uh, matrix by u uh, or the utility of the first player the second player's utility is just minus of you um, and that is the reason why it is called the matrix game you can represent the whole game using just a single matrix now uh, let us look at some of the uh, prop, uh, some of the things that we have discussed in the previous modules uh, the max mean strategies and uh, the min max strategies for this matrix so uh, if you look at the max mean of, uh, of this matrix, uh, of the matrix U, so in the first game, that is the penalty shootout game, uh, the max mean is first finding the minimum over the rows, so which is minus one. Uh, and uh, so that is that minimum value of that row is written here. And similarly, this minimum is also minus one. So the max mean value in this case will be minus one. In this matrix similarly when you compute the min max now you are taking the max with respect to the column so in this column you are taking the max which is one and similarly here also it is one so the min of that two maximum values is also is going to be equal to one and these two things are not the same while for uh, for the second uh, example the second game if you compute the max min value so these are the min values for each of these rows and you find the, uh, the max of it which is going to be 1 and here the mean of this max values is going to be 1 in, in this case they are the same okay so now what is the relationship of uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium with any of these uh, things that we have discussed so far we are discussing different things max mean values min max values and what is the relationship of PSNEs with all these things so first of all let us find out what are the PSNEs of these games 
uh, we know how to find out the PSNEs. Uh, let's go by the first principles. Uh, if we try to find out the pure strategy Nash equilibrium of the penalty shootout game, uh, we see that there does not exist any. This was one of our examples when we uh, actually gave, an, uh, gave a uh, case for non-existence of pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Pure strategy Nash equilibrium is not guaranteed to exist because you cannot find any uh, strategy profile. So for instance, in this strategy profile, uh, it is better for player 1 to deviate to R. Uh, similarly, if you look at this strategy profile, it is better for player 2 to deviate to uh, R. Uh, here also, because this is minus 1, so this is minus 1, 1, so here also for player uh, player 1, it is beneficial for going, uh, uh, beneficial to play uh, L instead of R, and here also it's better for player 2 to move to L. So none of these strategy profiles, four strategy profiles, uh, are essentially pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Alright, so what about this in the other game? Uh, here you can you can figure that this out. I mean take a, uh, a bit of time and uh, try to find out which one is the pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Let me give you the answer. So you see that uh, here uh, in this strategy profile M comma R, if you look at player one, this particular number is the maxima of this row, maxima uh, 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 over this column. So this is greater than this and this is also larger than that. Similarly for the second entry, it is also uh, the row maxima. So for player 2 R is uh, is better than playing any of these other strategies C or L if the other player is uh, playing play, player 1 is playing M and if uh, this player is playing R the second player is playing R then it, the best response for player 1 will be to play M so therefore M comma R is a uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium now uh, what can we observe uh, how can we actually uh, look at this uh, look at this property so in in order to find out the, uh, the the pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this kind of a game what are we actually doing we are actually trying to find out what is the the maximum value uh, over this uh, over this column uh, and we are also trying to find out what is the uh, maximum value over this column for the second entry now we know that the second entry is nothing but the negative value of uh, uh, of that uh, number so uh, if we look at only the matrix which is just uh, listing out the the first entries here then uh, what we are trying to find out is something which is uh, which is on one dimension trying to find out the maximum value and the other dimension trying to find out the minimum value and mathematically those kind of points uh, for for a matrix is what is known as a saddle point so here we are going to use this uh, the same name saddle point which is defined for the matrix but for uh, for games so we'll call the this is the saddle point of this game and this uh, the saddle point will uh, uh, refer to the value uh, the the utility for this uh, player one is going to be maximum and it is going to be minimum for player two which means the the uh, in the other dimension it is going to be the the uh, the minimum so uh, if you want to uh, represent the same matrix so this is the matrix representation of the same game and uh, suppose there are multiple uh, rows and columns and if we just try to uh, portray this uh, as uh, so on this dimension i have x and on this dimension i have y so let us uh, uh, place this in a, in a three dimensional plane so i have this x which are representing the different actions or the uh, different um, uh, uh, strategies of player one and y uh, on the y dimension is the different strategies of player two then what we are actually trying to find out in a, in a saddle point is something that that it will maximize uh, when we are varying over x and something that will minimize when we are uh, varying over y right that is the that is the this point if you can find uh, any such point that is going to be the saddle point and we will show that that saddle point is nothing but a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. In fact, um, uh, in the in the two person zero sum game or in a matrix game, these two notions are uh, one and the same. Saddle point means the pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Now uh, you can you can actually uh, try to do this exercise yourself. So, what are the saddle points of these two games? 
you can see that uh, in the in the first game the uh, penalty shootout game there does not exist any saddle point because you cannot really find any such point which is a which is a row maxima uh, uh, or maxima over a uh, over a specific column and uh, it is uh, minima over the over a row so therefore uh, no saddle point exists for that matrix but for the second example that arbitrary game example uh, there exists a saddle point and we have seen that uh, what is that uh, saddle point so uh, saying uh, what we have just uh, mentioned informally uh, in a more uh, formal way uh, so we have this theorem uh, in a matrix game with an utility matrix u s1 star s2 star is a saddle point if and only if it's a psne so this is this is uh, something which is actually making uh, this notion of indistinguishability between the saddle point and PSN. So whenever we in in the context of uh, matrix games, whenever we are talking about saddle points, we are actually meaning pure strategy Nash equilibrium and vice versa. Now what we are going to show uh, this is fairly straightforward. This uh, this is a saddle point which means which implies and is implied by this is the notation for that it implies in both directions. Uh, these two things. So first thing is because it's a saddle point uh, for the first entry here uh, that is the uh, when we are looking at that matrix and we are uh, varying with respect to a specific column. So this this way we are varying. Uh, so then uh, S1 star is uh, at least going to be as much as any other uh, utility in that matrix when the other player is actually sticking to that S2 star. So suppose this is S2 star, then S1 star is, is a point, S1 star uh, is a point such that this, uh, the uh, utility um, uh, or the, the value of that matrix gets maximized at this point. Now, uh, and this should ho uh, hold for all S1s. So therefore, uh, this is going to be a maximum. So if you want to draw it in this way, so this is the maxima on this dimension. Similarly, it is going to be the minima when uh, you are looking from the other dimension. So if you are lo uh, looking at S1 star, so player one is now fixing its strategy to S1 star and you are varying in this way. So you are going to S2 star and comparing that with different other uh, strategies. So for all such S2 star, this point is going to be the minimum. So in other words, this is if you want to draw it in this way. So this is going to be the minimum point. So therefore, that is what the what a saddle point means but now we can see that uh, by by the definition this is nothing but a definition of a pure strategy Nash equilibrium but what you are doing is this is nothing but the utility itself is a utility of one so the utility of one is nothing but u and utility of two is nothing but the negative of this u so therefore if you just flip this uh, uh, number so what you get is u2 s1 star s2 star <laughs> and the inequality will get flipped u2 s1 star comma s2 so for all s2s this inequality is going to hold and therefore that is a psn right so that is the that is the that is by definition of the psn so uh, so that that concludes this proof um, so uh, we have uh, uh, so for that formally uh, establishes that uh, psn and uh, 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 this uh, saddle points are one and the same so now we are going to define the max mean and the min max values so something that we have already uh, uh, shown uh, through examples so what is a max mean value this is something that we have already done uh, but now because we have only single matrix now we can we can just use the uh, the the indices of that matrix u and we are trying to find out uh, what is the minimum value with respect to the second coordinate and the maximum value with respect to the first coordinate. And let us uh, use this notation V lower bar to define that uh, max mean value. Similarly, the min max value is denoted by V uh, uh, upper bar and it is just, um, uh, it is first maximizing with respect to the first el uh, element, the first uh, en entry here in the matrix and then trying to, uh, and then minimizing with respect to the second element. Okay, so now the question is how these two things are related and uh, we have a small lemma which shows that uh, for matrix games uh, where this uh, things this min max and max mean uh, values are defined in the in the way uh, we have defined it before this uh, 
min max value is actually going to be at least as much as the max min value. So this inequality should hold. So note, note that this is min max and this is max min. Okay, so the proof is fairly straightforward. You can uh, just uh, start writing this uh, in the uh, in a very standard way. So first, we start with uh, the uh, the element uh, uh, element uh, at s one comma s two, uh, and uh, by the definition of minima, you can find this. Uh, this is the trick that we have used many times. And now, uh, what you can find is this inequality is going to hold for all s ones. Right, so uh, this is going to hold for all S ones. So therefore, we can actually take maxima on on both sides. So what we will have here is if we uh, use the uh, use the maxima on the on the uh, uh, left hand side uh, and uh, uh, fix the strategy of of the other player to S two and uh, use the maxima here. So notice that on the right hand side, it's just a function of S1. It's no longer a function of T2 because you have already taken the minima over it. Now, after taking the, uh, the maxima over the first element, uh, this uh, entity is neither a function of uh, T1 or T2, it's, it's a uh, fixed constant. Now, this uh, inequality is going to be satisfied for all S2 because we, that is the only variable here. Now you can take the, the minima, so it, this right hand side is just a constant number, it does not change with S2. Now this is going to be satisfied for all S2 and in particular if you take the minima then also it is going to get satisfied. So that essentially completes our proof. On the right hand, on the left hand side you have the min max value which is nothing but V upper bar and on the right hand side you have the V lower bar which is the maximum value.